Welcome to Wisdom Talk Radio, a collaborative community of explorers in conscious living. I've been talking these days about co-creation a lot. It's foundational to my work and especially prominent in the new things that I've been bringing through into being. So I am particularly delighted that Bob Jaco is joining us from Australia for today's episode. We'll be talking about all things consciousness, creation, and love. Hi, I'm Laurie Seymour, host of Wisdom Talk Radio and founder of The Baca Journey, fast-track technology for your co-creative power. For visionaries, innovators, company founders, and product designers, optimize your ability to create more in less time and enjoy every minute. My guest today is Bob Jaco. He is editor-in-chief of the Co-Creation Magazine and founder of Co-Creation Global, an emerging enterprise dedicated to changing global consciousness. A channel for 60 years for source consciousness called Signals of Love, Soul, S-O-L, transmitting wisdom and understanding about co-creation and unity consciousness. He has over 45 years experience in the field of energy medicine, teaching and coaching in business, medical and generic intuition and creativity. Bob, I'm so delighted we finally got this together from opposite sides of the world and we found a time to do this, welcome. Thank you, Laurie. It's a real pleasure being with you today and uh, to all your listeners and viewers. Um, thank you for having me. We're delighted. From, from the great down under. <laughs> <coughs> so because I mentioned this in your bio, I do want to start out by having you tell us what or who is Signals of Love? Okay, uh, soul started as a as a voice um, that uh, came along when I was ten, and, and the history of it is my father was a fairly violent man, and and uh, he was also an alcoholic. So uh, you know we used to reflect in a lot of beatings, and uh, and over a while. Um, you know, when you when you're in that that sort of space and you you're getting that down, I'm a, I was a pretty resilient kid, uh, so I would chat back and get a second second walloping for for chatting back. Um, <clears throat> but even with that resilience and that persistence, it got you down. You tended to 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 uh, close in on yourself, and so what happened was that uh, somewhere in the when I was 10, I remember this voice appearing and it wasn't voices, it was a voice. Mm -hmm. And it was very, I, I could say, loving, wise and, and fairly, um, the word I'm looking for is that it was a teaching voice. It was a voice that used to show me and teach me uh, all sorts of stuff that I never knew. And this is a 10-year-old mm -hmm. and um, used to send me off to the library and pick up books on philosophy and, and, and uh, the occult and magic and, uh, and you know, all of the uh, mythologies of the world. I virtually read them all. So my first journey in the first 10 to 15, 15 uh, five years was about reading uh, and 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 getting an understanding of the human experience through through uh, through the written word, and uh, but then began to evolve in observing the world uh, of the physical and the world of the non-physical. In other words, for the last sixty years plus, I have worked in both worlds, observing, experiencing understanding, learning and growing. So it's been a transformational uh, journey with soul um, as, as a, as I call it a sidekick. <laughs> um, we don't know which one is the sidekick. The sidekick, yeah. Uh, the, the, the energy that's been my partner, if you like, 
mm-hmm. in the uh, in the world of my personal transformation and, and understanding of how the world works, why it works, when it works, when it doesn't, and so that's given me a real grounding in in basically understanding how co-creation works mm-hmm. and and being able to experience that by applying it in my own specific journey and from that that uh, that place um, I've managed to find a springboard in in terms of teaching that um, in the world mm-hmm. and, and that's where we are today we're uh, we're in a space where we We've, we've set up co-creation magazine, co-creation global, with the uh, with the um, objective of uh, bringing the work of co-creation or the understanding of co-creation and the fact that we are one consciousness, as as the word I'll use, is we are extensions of the one consciousness. So let's let's talk a little bit about that because co-creation is a is a term that's used in a lot of places and probably used differently in a lot of places. <coughs> it's it's very much to do with that aspect that uh, of us that gets to create with that collective consciousness, with that greater consciousness, with that field of potentiality, or whatever one wants to call it. Um, I mean, I, I would start there. But I'm interested to have you speak to what what you mean right now by co-creation, because I'm sure that's evolved over time. Well, it has. Um, the, there are there are different meanings of co-creation. Co-creation can be used and is used in a, a business sense, mm-hmm. where you get a few people around a table or in a room, and they are innovating and co-creating. In other words, they're putting job inputs to create or innovate or evolve some idea or some sort of product or service. Mm-hmm. And, and that is that is the most common version of co-creation. In, in effect, I went on to Wikipedia and had a look at that, and that's that's the definition. So we're also uh, discussing the idea of going into Wikipedia to put the more larger version of co-creation into the system. I have to figure out how we do I'll, that. I'll do that with you. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, if, we, if we take it in steps, this is the best way of me describing co-creation and the experience of it. Let's think about us as being extensions of source and therefore we are innate and we are possibly now conscious, right? (laughs) But we are also unconscious. Let's say we're possibly conscious. Co-creation means that in a conscious, um, uh, in a conscious process, we understand that we are all connected. Okay, we're all in the one, we're the one field mm-hmm. of energy, the one field of consciousness. Therefore, as we extrapolate a desire, we extrapolate it from a field of infinite possibilities. Mm-hmm. You could say that before we think of the desire, and the moment we think of the desire, we actually create the beginnings of the desire, we turn it into matter, yet the matter hasn't arrived. Now, essentially, that that infinite field of possibilities always exists for everything. Our thoughts, our emotions, our intentions, all uh, are there in a field of possibilities until the moment we reach where we actually specifically desire one specific portion of the infinite field of possibilities. So co-creation starts at a point where we are now clear on what our desire is. It's popped out of the infinite field into the focus field and that we are now clear on what we want. We set our intention and we ask what we call source, Mm-hmm. And there's a step in that because in my world, I step into mm-hmm. frequency of source. And source. Mm-hmm. I don't do it as I, I have two versions of myself. There's Little Bob and there's Big Bob. <laughs> okay, Little Bob is the local guy, you know, the one that's, that's basically doesn't know much. He's the one I call the personality. 
Yeah, personality, ego, there are many, many different versions mm-hmm. of it. But it's limited in the sense that we can only uh, only know very much, very little amount of information about that. We know what we know. We know what we know, yeah. About that. And Big Bob is, is the all-knowing. It's the all-place of, 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 of everything. So it's a, you could say it's a handover to, to that, that space, that energy. Mm-hmm. Now, that energy is all-knowing. It's, it's the creation of everything. And <clears throat> it's also love, total love. Mm-hmm. You could say at that point in time, I'm asking Source to convert my intentions to love and bring it around to a physical product or service or, or person, something, whatever my intentions were for that, that co-creation. Now, co-creation means that because every person on the planet is also a part of me, I call it the spiritual logistics chain. So the moment I set that intention, what happens is it, it pops around on the, on the internet um, and, and the internet says, and people that you've never met says, we hear you, you know, we're part of that chain. Mm-hmm. So whatever that intention, whatever that thing that you want it, it is already there. Mm -hmm. But the people that are building it, making it, delivering it, appearing themselves or whatever, they all light up. You don't see this going on, but it has, it works. And suddenly there's this thing called time. And from the time you set the intention to the time it arrives, uh, it just appears. Mm -hmm. And it, it appears as if, by magic, but it basically it's already in process the moment you set the intention. And so that's now, what we talk about or think of as uh, synchronicity or, or miracle synchrony. or accident. Yeah. It's that. It's not, it's, well, that's, that's really what's happening. I use, I use the word conscious in, in, a, in a preferred form because conscious means you know the moment you're set, you know how the system works Mm -hmm. and you know that when you ask for things, you are the purveyor of that event Mm -hmm. exclusively and in in everything. Every person on this planet and elsewhere, if there's the elsewheres uh, and any other life form that's sentient, does exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. But predominantly on our planet, most people are unconscious about it. Therefore, they do not have, they do not connect their intentions, even if their intentions are subconscious or unconscious, to the event that they are attracting and bringing into their experience. Everything. I mean, literally everything. Mm-hmm. So we're we're conduits of experience, and the purpose of our existence because we're extensions of source, is to create experience on experience on experience. We're conduits of experience that allows us to grow and come from the space of being unconscious to the space of being conscious. Uh, People call that realisation or awakening. And from that process, we begin to shift our model of of, uh, habits and behaviours to a more heart-centred understanding of of ourselves, of our planet and of other humans because you, we begin to see them as us or extensions of us. Let, let me ask you a question. Um, there are, it is often my experience where it's not so much a matter of me having an intention and then bringing people <coughs> forward, but that... It is as I get quiet and go inside and I may be asking about what my next step is or what I'm needing to do that day or something like that, that there is something that comes through that comes to me that um, I know is not from, as you, little Laurie, as you were talking about little Bob, um, that really is something that's being given to me to be addressed, to be explored. Yeah, I'm giving you, I'm giving a, a simple version here. Um, it, it, it becomes a little bit more complex as we begin to evolve to understand that we are transmitters. 
Mm -hmm. to a degree, some form or another, the more we begin to involve our inner abilities to use imaging and action or imagination and to use the inner tutor, I call that intuition, mm -hmm. uh, those begin to, to come into us. The, the, the prevalent population use it sporadically and probably don't know how to use it well and are uneducated in its power. But it's the, it's the, we were granted that, we co-created that as a species, mm -hmm. as, as you know, co-creation. Uh, co-creation was modelled on the understanding that source was an infinite, absolute singularity before mm -hmm. it became multitudes of itself. And so co-creation, uh, from that point, co-creation, creation become co-creation. So the moment it created infinite versions of itself. It was a co-creation between its, the, the source singularity and the extensions of it. And therefore, everything in the universe is technically a co-creation, mm -hmm. including what we do here on the planet. If you give it some thought, you'll begin to understand that co-creation from a spiritual perspective uh, is virtually um, non-existent as creation in this world. In other words, well, there is, see, creation is a singularity. Co-creation must have a relativity between one and another, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. or many, including, including the planet. Well, could it, I mean, for me, co-creation is not necessarily about me and another. It's about me and source. Well, yeah, I, I'm also trying to define that you and source and another is another person that is also source. It could also so, so, so when you think about humanity, mm -hmm. humanity as we, as a collective, we are extensions of source. Mm -hmm. Therefore, every individual in the chain of humanity is a part of you. You know, all you are is just simply part of a, a network. That is there. So when you manifest or co-create anything, it's that relationship between you and another you or a, a many another yous that, that, that create the event, the circumstances or the uh, desire that you want to experience to appear in your world. And I'm talking about conscious Mm -hmm. Consciousness, being conscious that you can do this and are able to do that and know that when you set out that desire and intention, it's actually you that did it. Mm -hmm. Whereas most of the world's population don't understand that, don't know it. I'm talking to the people that are probably understanding this and, and in many ways sort of get it. But the, the, the issue here is not about getting them to understand it, it's getting 7.5 billion others that are co-creating co mm -hmm. all the things that we see mm -hmm. in the world to understand it. There's got to be a shift, the shift to be from um, those who understand it to help facilitate the others mm -hmm. to understand it. So that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about, Bob, is, is um, you've got this global project going. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it's, it's, it's an emerging, a whole emerging enterprise, um, but that your intention is around doing that changing of global consciousness. And, and there's different pockets of people, you know, doing that in one way or another, but I'm very interested in what you see your next, um, what's this going to look like for you? <laughs> Sorry for laughing. Um, no, please laugh. In, in, many, in, in many ways, you know, Laurie, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Basically, what we do is we, when I was given this 30-year vision plan in 2016, 30 years, and I'm 72 in a, in a week, mm -hmm. Uh, this, was a 30, this was a 30 to 50 year plan mm -hmm. to roll out and to, uh, to create a movement uh, of such a dimension that it has a huge impact on the consciousness of the planet. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Now, I question this when Solomon, you know, I have coffee. I understand. So <laughs> I question this. I said, why, why 300 million? And Sol said, well, we shall use base 12 mathematics and just tell you that and, and suggest to you that 300 million is a sort of tipping point mm-hmm. uh, for uh, the movement of uh, if you think about it, inside a 300 million pod is a huge amount of human intelligence, both local and if those, that intelligence is also connected to the same, um, same energy, same facility and same pathway, that is, that is a huge impact. It's, it's an impact. To, to the degree that the United States has an impact on the world. And you could say that that, that pod can add as, act as a cantilever to, the, uh, to countries and to other places that are still living in the unconscious paradigm and still continuing with their wars, their diversity, uh, you know, their, their, uh, uh, their, their processes of separation. So we, we can act as a cantilever, but a huge influence centre for, uh, for teaching, evolving, catalyzing consciousness in a way that a hundred little pods or a thousand little pods can't do or find it, will find it very difficult to do. Yeah. To get now, traction. That tipping point. Yeah, to get traction, you know, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, we're all temporal beings. We're all here temporarily. This physical body is only something we use for a short period of time. The, the real truth of the matter is that when humanity and all life was granted the free will to choose its own experience, there was no rules we can co-create and we can co-destruct. So mankind can indeed end the experiment mm-hmm. itself by staying unconscious and, and, and continuing, mm-hmm. continuing to live, act and behave in the way they currently do. And that reality feels real. Mm-hmm. It, we, we, we experience it through all sorts of things. You know, we, people are talking about climate change or we're drinking and eating uh, the equivalent of a credit card a day with all the pollution in the, in, the, in the water and everything else. There's all sorts of things that are going on, uh, but they're going on for a reason. We are, we are co-creating this, uh, this uh, reality which is there to mirror back to us our possible demise. And I use the word possible with love and, 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 a, and a question mark. Possible is always possible. But humanity as a collective needs to make that, it needs the assistance to make that switch into a conscious collective working from the heart and being connected back to earth and connected to ourselves and reintroducing, reintroducing and remembering who we are. And is that for you the, the fundamental aspect of what, you, what this global mission is? Yes. Really to bring people to that place of consciousness? It's, we are not teaching anything that hasn't been taught five to seven to 10,000 years ago in various theologies. All of us said the same thing. But you're All still of us said the same thing. Okay. But you see, humans are interesting because uh, they develop these stories. The stories turn into cultures. Cultures turn into theologies. And they're handed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. It goes on and on and on. And the generation think they're local. They think according to the beliefs. They act and behave according to the beliefs. There are places on this planet where the generations have been warring amongst themselves for thousands of years, Mm -hmm. and it hasn't changed because the culture, which I call local culture, the local understandings, um, have induced these these separations, these... um, these, you know, uh, one tribe versus another tribe, the lack, 
the fear. All of these things are predominant in that culture and in the probably the underlying theology that's invoked in that culture. So the children start the process and they hand that down and they keep going. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what did Einstein say? You know, the, <laughs> um, um, the uh, understanding of stupidity is repeating the same thing time and time again and expecting different results. That's a local trend. But once you move in the connection and remember, so we are a remembering system. What we teach is no different and hasn't been to those teachers that came 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 years ago. But humanity didn't listen. We have a different place right now because humanity is creating another opportunity this opportunity called the potential for co-destruction. So, is that, is, so you, you say that, that there's a particular um, moment in time right, that is right now. And correct. And that is why this is happening, why you're bringing your particular version of this teaching forward now. What is that? You, you could say that I could have stayed retired in 2016, mm-hmm. but... When Sol gave me this whole 30 to 50 year plan, it was because the timing was right. Humanity was working, was moving in a particular direction and that direction was an opportunity for humanity to realise that they were the co-creators of this direction, which may not be to their uh, ongoing existence. Can you say something more about that? That's very intriguing to me about what, what, what about this time um, <clears throat> makes it possible for us to be able to hear that? Okay, what, what is happening is we're moving into the field of the opening up of collective conscious groups. You see it appearing, first of all, in the local field. Uh, there are climate change groups, environmental groups, social, social groups. Um, uh, all sorts of groups appearing, and you see them all over the planet. They're, you know, they're uh, they're protesting. They're, you know, social mediaing. They're all saying, "Hey, look what we're doing to this planet." That's a local consciousness beginning to open up. They're looking at the world from the perspective of local consciousness and physicality. They're looking at the world in terms of its ongoing survival. They're looking, and that that also is a potential tipping point for moving into uh, a new way of understanding Mm -hmm. themselves. They're not quite there yet Mm -hmm. because they're looking at uh, the world relevant to their experience of it in physicality without yet associating or knowing that they are the co-creators of that story anyway. Okay, so... That's a leap that they're, you know, that they're... Yeah, it's... it's it can be a leap or it can be a very subtle shift, a slide mm. in, into that. Mm-hmm. It's just that the if, if we as a collective could come together, those who are of us who are awakening or awake could come together, um, what's happening now, that, that, that there's lots of people and it happens when you start moving into this field, suddenly you see everybody, you think that's everybody, uh, is talking the same language. It's, you know, oh, he's doing that, she's doing that, they're doing that, they're doing this. They're all doing similar things. That in itself is, is when you move into this field, you actually lock into uh, the a gravitational force that brings those people into your, mm-hmm. your field of awareness. But that too is an illusion because it's not the field, the greater field. The greater field is the world of the unconscious. Um, We don't experience what people experience in Syria. We don't experience what people experience in Africa. We don't experience what people experience in in South America. They are all having their local local experiences, Mm -hmm. uh, mainly because we're not connected to that. But in the, in the greater field, 
we understand. We don't have to have that experience. We just simply tap into source. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the experiences are because essentially as we produce an experience, source gets it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. So we're this, this conduit of experiences and so source grows and we become aware. And as we become aware, we shift our attitudes and habits and behaviours to a different cause of consciousness and we start looking at the world as one thing, one unified field, Mm -hmm. rather than that's Africa over there, that's Syria over there, they're bombing, you know, they're getting bombed and they're having all sorts of problems and, uh, and, you know, whatever's happening around the world. We are detached from that in the unconscious level. But once we get into the conscious level, we became connected to that. Mm-hmm. And we, we, see the fallacy, we see the fallacy of this whole thing, these wars, these mm-hmm. perpetual uh, separations, these, uh, uh, you know, the lack and the fear and everything else that we see in the world, we connect to and say, well, let's help others to change that. Mm-hmm. It's not so much we're here, here to rescue anybody. We don't. They don't need rescue. Everything is, is 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 appropriate as it is. But what we do is we just simply, if we could bring all these people into the one space, I, and I talk about it as a moment that all of these groups, even the groups that are working in the same field as I am. Mm-hmm. Um, like parts of an orchestra playing the same concerto, Mm -hmm. but they're playing their own, um, you know, that's like violins are in one concert hall and and percussion are in another concert hall and brass is in another concert hall, but they're not in the same concert hall playing the concerto together. And if you've ever listened to a concerto and then broken out, the violins only it just doesn't sound the same. The, <laughs> the, 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 connection, the connection between the instruments, the orchestra and the players are uh, uh, converging and they bring together the, the, the depth and the, uh, the swelling of, of that energy mm-hmm. which affects us as, you know, as human beings. And music affects us literally. Absolutely. So what we're trying to do is to invite other, or, other parts of the orchestra mm-hmm. playing the same tune to come into the one concert hall. The problem with separation is that it even exists in this area because these people see themselves as doing, they're wanting to do all this stuff and this is really great. But, you know, 50 people with 20,000 members mm-hmm. is a million people. You have a much bigger presence. You have much bigger resources, you have much bigger skills, and you can do a lot more with a million than you can do with 20,000. Well, I feel moved just to share with you, which I'm not sure if you know about or not. I'm a member of something called the Evolutionary Business Council, and we too are looking at that tipping point, only we say it's 1.2 billion people. And we have right now a collective reach of over 600,000. And we're looking to at by 2020 up to 1.2 billion people. It being that sense of a collective reach to create that kind of massive global change that's needed. The challenge for local humans, <laughs> even in this movement, is to move away from placing themselves in a boundary. Mm-hmm. In, a, in, a, in a room mm-hmm. and saying that nothing exists outside of this room <laughs> and, and, and to say, see, we are not used to sharing. Mm-hmm. We are not used to converging. We are not used to integrating. We are, th- these are all foreign elements. The, 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 the Aborigines and the Indians of, of around the world know how to work with this this field of energy. They have lived with the land. They've lived with the forests. They understand how to share in good times and bad times. But that culture has never been uh, appropriated into the Western world. Mm -hmm. And the Western world, you say, we're still forming, all of these groups are still forming at what, what, what I call local consciousness level and still yet haven't quite 
taken that next level, that next jump. Mm-hmm. You're saying, can we give up owning? Mm-hmm. Can we let go? Can we just simply work as one group? And then you've got, you know, then, then the argument is that we've got a company, we've got a company, or you've got a company, <laughs> and how does this all work? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the concert hall scenario, they all agree to play. Mm-hmm. They don't have to give up anything. Violins still stay violins. You know, percussion still stays percussion. And, and the other thing, what we do is agree on working together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And whatever vehicle is working together, it doesn't even have to be a vehicle. It could be a great big social media uh, movement that all pop into one place and whether what feeds into that doesn't really matter. But what happens is that a community can be turned into a movement without any form of direction. It can organically mm-hmm. suppose to uh, manage itself, work itself, because what you do is you, you actually sponsor organic development, mm-hmm. organic leadership, mm-hmm. and the movement takes a life on, of its own. Yeah. You give it input through wisdom, you give it input through knowledge, and then you let it go mm-hmm. and let it form. And this is exactly what we're doing. We've got, we've just started Co-Creation Global Community, which is the, uh, the, the benchmark. We invite all sorts of people in it mm-hmm. and to it, uh, there's no cost, nothing else. It's just people who want to become uh, and start the movement. Mm-hmm. Because I'm so glad you're starting. You started this, and, and yeah. you are opening the and, doors wide. And we open the doors to anybody that wants to get in. There are no fees, no costs, and basically, um, essentially, we we build on that, and mm-hmm. we invite people to bring other friends in, and 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 people of a like mind to start the whole thing going because it's a it, you know, it starts one person at a time, you know, and then builds upon that, and uh, and takes it where where it needs to go because everybody in that group is aligned, mm-hmm. is they're in sync. They're, they know the bigger picture. That's what they want. That's their, that's part of their life intention, mm-hmm. and they're in they're in service to themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, and I say this because everybody else out there, even the unconscious, are reflections of their unconscious. That there isn't many or any people on this planet that are not uh, that are fully conscious. We all waft in and out of it, even I do, and I'm the first to admit that. You know, I have periods of unconsciousness, Mm -hmm. and everybody does. We waft into it. So we're not always conscious. What I mean by conscious, in the frequency of source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, you know, I plop into being local Bob and and, and little Bob. I love that idea of local and... (laughs) Yeah, we we get into, we. you know, I'm big Bob and little Bob and, and... you know, we we vary that. If we were fully realised, <laughs> we wouldn't need to be here. Exactly, um, and, and that's part of the journey. So, it's learning to um, navigate and co-create in a world where you know that you are source, mm-hmm. and that's simply, you know, because source is non-local. How do I explain non-local? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. That's easy. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. But in a sense. How do you discover it in yourself? Um, the, the answer is you can't. You just have to know that it's you, okay? Look in a mirror um, and, and look through the physical form and you, we're, we're just simply frequency if you can see that energy. Well, that's part of, you know, it's part of what there are people like me who teach people how to do that, how to connect yeah. with that, yeah. people like you that do that. What I yeah. want to make sure is as we wrap up here is that people know how to connect in with this global movement, what's mm. the best place for people? Okay, to- if they go onto Facebook, and I will send you the links uh, for this, mm-hmm. it, uh, the Facebook is a co-creation global community. Mm-hmm. So if they go into Facebook and they type that in, they will find the community page. All they need to do is to join mm-hmm. and, and, and meet Astrid and, and Kim. There's two Kims. 
uh, and myself in there. We uh, we do um, we do Facebook lives. We had communication. Now our community is a little bit different from most. We actually get in there and engage. We have conversations. We're Absolutely. not just. We don't, don't just post, we don't, don't post or comment, but there's people in there all the time. They'll meet Kim and they'll meet Astrid and they'll meet me uh, yeah, so and they'll meet Sol. We'll, we'll do we'll do Sol lives. Okay. In, in and we'll have that in the show notes for sure. And um, what about the magazine? The magazine, if they put in co-creation magazine, that's co-creation magazine. Mm-hmm. That'll bring them to uh, the, the magazine website. Oh, is that, is that co-creationmagazine.com? Yes. Okay. And that will bring them to the magazine website. If they hit magazine on the top uh, left hand of the uh, the uh, web page, mm-hmm. it's the third third issue down. And they'll see all the issues anyway, mm-hmm. but it's the third issue down, and then they will get the magazine. We are building a completely new platform uh, that's under build there. It'll have co creation TV, podcast platforms, uh, places for musicians, conscious musicians. Uh, the, um, uh, the magazine will go uh, multimedia, so people like yourself can put podcasts on our magazine, mm-hmm. uh, video stories on the magazine, as well as text. Wow. So it'll be a complete, a big 30 year a complete new model. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need people younger than us to uh, move in and take it, take, take some rain, take some of the reins. Well, that's, that's actually one of our major objectives. The future is with the children and the young, uh, young adults. And so part of our, our, our journey and our evolutionary process is to get them engaged mm-hmm. in co-creation, understanding it because if you really want to understand uh, where we, uh, the future is with, with the children and the young people, yeah. that if they're awake, they become the future politicians, the scientists, the environmentalists, the innovators. You know, our generation has 30 or 40 years left in it and then, you know, we move on. But if we don't leave a legacy mm-hmm. um, for these kids, then... All we can leave is the old paradigm. Yeah. So well, we're working on that, and and I celebrate your. I was going to say your efforts, but I don't want to say that your your creation. You know, your the way in which you are bringing your energy to bear on what's needed in the world. So I, I thank so, you for that, Laurie. That's that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I, I'm in this by choice. It, mm-hmm. And, and the only reason I stayed with it, because when I saw this, this map, this road map, I actually procrastinated for nearly 13 months. It was so overwhelming. So one day I sat down with Sol, had a conversation. He said, okay, I will do this, provided you co-create all the resources, the people, the money that's necessary, everything, and including the community and the movement, you assist us in co-creating that adventure. Without that, I'm not in. Yeah. With that, I'm in. So and I'm glad to know that you're in and that uh, that uh, so yeah. came through. So, so we actually live co-creation 101. Mm-hmm. Everything we do as 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 a, as a group mm-hmm. and personally, we actually live it every day. Absolutely. So, so what we what we can teach other people is our experience of it and trans transfer that yeah. to others as well. Yeah. Thank you for being with us here today at Wisdom Talk Radio, Bob. I, I truly uh, welcome your message and the inspiration that you've brought to people. Thank you, Laurie. I thank you very much for having me. And uh, also to the viewers and listeners, um, I'm really pleased to be able to uh, tell our story. Yes, yes. And I want to add my thanks to our listeners for being with us today at Wisdom Talk Radio. Remember to join us here regularly for more wisdom, discovery, and illumination. You can find us on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. And if you've enjoyed listening today, please leave us a review or even support continuing programming by leaving us a tip. That helps more people access the wisdom. 
And for more about optimizing your connection with your own creative intelligence, find me, Laurie Seymour, over at thebacajourney.com. Thanks for joining us here at Wisdom Talk Radio. We wish you well in your conscious explorations. For more information and to join in the conversation, our website is wisdomtalkradio.com or at Wisdom Talk Radio on Facebook. Facebook.